Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Old Time Rock and Roll. I'm your host, David Tear, where I've been featuring my personal top 3,000 songs of the rock era from 1954 to 1999. Today, I'm up to song number 2748, and that one is Leader of the Band by Dan Fogelberg. Um, this one, I think, was released in 1981, but it peaked... Uh, at number nine on Billboard in 1982. And uh, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, and it was also released on this album called The Innocent Age, which was released in 1981. And I'm going to start by talking about Dan Fogelberg. Here's a picture of him, I think, in the early 80s. As you can see, he was a very handsome man. Um, and he has kind of an interesting history, I think. Uh, not only was he a musician, he was a singer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist but his uh his father was as well and that's what the song the leader of the band is all about i'll get to that later but uh, his father had three sons who all became musicians because he was a musician himself and i guess his children were part of his band and the father was the leader of the band and that's what the song's about and uh you know jan fogelberg had a pretty impressive history as a as a singer-songwriter. I'm going to go through his hits. Uh, so um, his first hit was in 1975. That was called Part of the Play. That went to number 31. In 1978, he had The Power of Gold, which went to number 24. In 1980, he had his biggest hit, which was called Longer. That went to number two, just missed the top spot. Uh, later that year, he had Hard Hotels, which went to number 21. In 1981, he had Same Old Lang Syne, which went to number nine, and Hard to Say, which went to number seven. In 1982, he had the song I'm featuring today, Leader of the Band, which went to number nine. Later that year, he had Run for the Roses, which went to number 18, Missing You, which went to number 23. And in 83, he had Make Love Stay, which went to number 29, and The Language of Love, which went to number 13. I remember when this was a hit. You know, most of his songs were ballads, and uh, I think they were kind of nauseating ballads, actually. But The Language with Love, I remember this song, and I was kind of surprised because it's almost like a rock song. He even plays the electric guitar on it. Uh, I think that was one of his better songs, actually. Uh, I think it is coming up later on my list. In 1984, he had Believe in Me, which went to number 48. 1985, he had Go Down Easy, which went to number 85. Finally, 1987, he had She Don't Look Back, which went to number 84. So those were his hits. Uh, like I said, very prolific singer-songwriter. Not one of my favorites. A little, a little too mellow and a little too sappy for my taste, including this song, Leader of the Band. But it's a pretty powerful song, which is, I guess, why I featured it. Like I said, it's a very personal song. It's about his father. It's a tribute to his father and how much uh, gratitude he had for him. Uh, you know, he, uh, all of his uh, musical talent he said he owed to his dad, which is a pretty powerful thing to say, especially for a pop musician. Not too many pop musicians can say that about their parents or have said that about their parents. Another sad note about this song is his father died in August of 1982, just shortly after, I think less than a year after the song was released. It was released in November 81. So I guess it was good that Dan Fogelberg was able to make this closure with his dad before he died. Uh, anyway, like I said, it's a very powerful song. And I probably didn't appreciate it enough when it was a hit. I have another story to tell you guys. I was in college when this song came out. And I was really starting to get, that was probably my peak of my interest in rock and roll. And I was kind of a rebel in the early 80s. That's kind of when I discovered 60s music. I fell in love with British invasion music like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and the Who. And Dan Fogelberg was about my least favorite uh, pop musician at the time even though he was probably the peak of his popularity. And I remember, you know, my, my uh, roommate had a friend who I really didn't like. This guy was a religious fanatic. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but uh, I didn't get along with this guy at all. I used to get in huge religious arguments against him. I was, I was like an atheist at the time. I'm not anymore. I'm an agnostic. I, I'm spiritual, but I'm an agnostic. He was a very religious Christian. As a matter of fact, he was... 
he was studying to be a chaplain. His father was a chaplain. And I guess he really liked this song because it had a lot of personal meaning to him. But I remember I was in his room with my best friend who was his roommate and this guy who I didn't like. And uh, they were listening to this song. And I remember right after the song finished, on whatever radio station we were listening to, the next song that came on was Stop in the Name of Love by Diana Ross and the Supremes, which is a very upbeat, you know, 60s Motown song. I remember when the song came on, I was so excited. I said, yeah, that's, that's music. And I remember the, this guy I didn't like, he said, did you even hear what the song leader of the band was about? And the thing is, I guess the sad thing is I, I didn't really, and I didn't care. I just thought it was a sappy piece of shit at the time. But now I can appreciate it more. And I guess that's the reason it's on my list. Anyway, that's my profile on Leader of the Band by Dan Fogelberg. Um, thank you for watching. You guys rock, and I'll see you next time. Bye.